All right, welcome to Wickerson Studios. I'm basically going to build a script again to um, show why Grasshopper is so highly addictive and fun to play with, uh, building geometries out of simple things like cylinders. So what I'm going to do is jump in here, uh, go into perspective view, probably turn off my turntable, and uh, go to shaded, and try and figure out where we're going to begin this uh, model. And we're going to center it over here. I'm going to take off what actually is in preview right now and we're going to start with basically building this script up from how I think it can be built. Um, I'm going to draw from the script here so you can kind of keep peeking up to it but it's not too uh, hard so uh, if you basically go into curves um, that sorry surf solids you can go into primitives and grab yourself a cylinder or whatever shape you want. Cylinder is kind of interesting because you're going to have something that uh, doesn't have a top or bottom so I'm probably gonna have to do a cap on that sooner or later and you'll see that coming in basically what I want to do is I want to have a range and a length um, but I want to show you a little tick with a uh, uh, trick with uh, right click over here on radius go into the expression node I think expressions really something to get you started that you may actually end up moving towards coding and scripting uh, again but just begin with something simple X uh, times 2 and uh, pop that in there. And now when you start popping in sliders, you'll see what happens as I bring in a slider to here. I'm not only bringing in a slider woo, as we follow this back to 80, um, which means I have a length of anything between a 1, and that's a fast little technique of just double-clicking and hitting something. Uh, if I pick an integer value between 10 and 100, it's going to be slider between uh, 1 and 100. These are little things you'll pick up on. If I put that into range, uh, into length there I'd have my length and then if I grab my uh, radius I would have double that so there's my cylinder and that is similar to what was happening here except I took a seed value instead of really what the length was playing through it was playing through a range through a domain and into very small numbers so what I'm going to do is uh, have my range I'm going to not I'm going to show you another example if I took a 1.00 it's going to give me a slider from 0 to 1 I bring that in I bring this one in and boom big difference in the scale of what we're dealing with there's our first cylinder now what I want to get you in the habit of is that number slider this is the technique we're going to be using again and again and again let's pop that through going into sets sequence let's put that through a range which is going to give us it's going to demand a domain go into your math grab yourself construct a domain and now you can construct your domain and I chose some very interesting numbers to do that and I have two sliders here I'm going to cut and paste one is to keep it from going to zero so I set it at 0 0.02 max, and the other one has a range from 0 0.02 through to 1. That way it won't have any problems with any information coming into it. And now what I have is I have a range that um, is not dependent on that one slider. That one slider has been brought up here, and I can take that range, which is actually something I want you to get in the habit of doing from the very start in Grasshopper, looking at your param viewer, and finding out what is there. And I have one branch with 11 items on it. And that will then make 11 cylinders at that uh, length and at that radius. And you can see the range goes right through, um, giving me, if I, if I slid my param viewer over here now and see what's coming out, I've actually generated uh, one branch with 11 items and I have 11 uh, cylinders of all different um, radiuses and, and lengths. So that's something I can deal with. So what would I do to that thing? Now, you may look here and see that I've actually used things like jitters and amplifications and mass multiplications. We'll leave that out for now. But what I do want to do is I want to do something to that. And this is going to make this uh, start to gain more and more paths uh, in its data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that. So I'm going to go to transform. I'm going to try and go pretty fast to get this through in 15 minutes uh, max. I'm going to move those cylinders. And in moving them, yes, I could move them. And they're going to default to the Z axis and move 10. And that's exactly what they did. But I want control over that. So I'm going to hit Z. And I'm going to take that Z value. I'm going to plug it into my motion. But the exact same thing I did before, not with a range. I'm going to actually use a series. Go into my sets tools. It's another really good sequence tool. Series. I'm going to pull that in. And I'm going to have a start and end. And what you're going to see is that there's two in the same spot on the end. And why is that? Well, when you're dealing with steps and counts in series, one of them has to change. And when I go into this param viewer and I take a look at how many are coming through, I have 11 items here and I have 10 items here. So maybe I'll just uh, make a copy of that so you can see that. 
um, I need to adjust one, which is why in the steps tool, I could go in and I could say in my expression node x minus 1, which would be easy. I want to get you in the habit of going into here a little deeper into the expression node, which looks pretty intimidating. But let's double click on it. Let's type in what we want, x minus 1 for the count on the range. And it's going to say still problems with it. These variable x's won't work because I have no information coming in under the name variable x. And I have no information coming in under the variable y. So I'm going to delete that one. And in doing so, I now can take my uh, number of what I want going in there into count. And let's say the count is going to be anywhere between uh, 1 and 100. I'm going to bring that in, minus 1 to it, and put it in the steps for there. And then I'm going to take my 12 and leave it at 12 for the count. And now you see how that solved that problem. Let me just go back. You see how that double one's there because it's counting 10 and 11. But when I bring that one in, they're both at 10 now. They match up perfectly. Actually, they're both at 12 because I ended up adding one. <laughs> uh, I think I added. No, I ended up minusing one. Uh, but you can see my count as I change it and move back down to 10. We've got the effects of both of them at 10 now. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, I've moved that data, and now I'm looking at this. So what I do is I take my preview off everything else. Preview off. And now I know what I'm doing as a path and what I've actually got coming in. And I'm going to grab my geometry. I'm going to have a look at my parameter viewer to see what I have. I have a path. I have one branch with 10 items on it. So that's fine. No reason to do anything else. Um, what could we do then? Uh, we, because I have these cylinders now, I do want to lay hold of some information with capping holes. And I may end up capping the holes on the cylinder for good. But in doing so, that gives me a closed surface that I could take the volume. Um, volume of this, or you could take the area of it uh, if it was just the top of the cap. And I can grab that and get a centroid. Now I have more data. I have centroids all the way through here. And what's nice is I can take a rotation and do exactly the same thing with that centroid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a, I'm just going to, actually I'm not going to do that. I'm going to grab my transform so I don't get you guys caught up in all the wires. Transform 3D. And I'm going to take that geometry and I'm going to pass it into there. And there you go. You got all your data there. It's all being rotated. The problem is the angle. If we take a look, I'm going to skip the jitter. I do like to deal in radians, so it's very common for me to go to maths and jump into utilities and grab pi. Slide that out, and I want my angle in pi. And I want a range on that as well. So if you take a look at what I did, range domain. Uh, what's nice is when you go into set sequence range, pop that in there. Your domain, you can go back to your maths, grab your domain, slide that in here, and now you can set that from 0 dot dot to 0.000, and that's a fast way to get a nice range moving in the rotations of this information. But the problem is it's still spinning in the orientation of the cylinder like this. So what I'm going to do is change the axis, and I want the axis to be the YZ plane. And watch what happens. And it's rotating around defaulting to zero and throwing some interesting geometry down below. You may want that, but I have my centroid, which will take the data on each thing. One thing to think about is match your data. So if we have one branch with 10 items, I should have 10 centroids. So I should have one branch with 10 items. Oops. And I should have a rotation, one branch with 11 items. Uh oh, I'm rotating a little more than I wanted to. And that's because these steps are off by one. So I've got to go back to that little equation, x minus 1, bring it up into steps, and boom, solve the problem. And now we're looking at a very interesting tool like this. I'm going to take all these and take preview off. Um, uh, preview off. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to move that down and keep that there. And because I'm using this above one, just for reference, because I think it's nice to know when this thing's going to be over, let's group that. Uh, keep that out of the way. Let's just keep going see what we did. So we've got a nice rotation happening. Well, what else could I do to it? What else did I do to it? Uh, I moved that geometry. And once again, I'm going to move that geometry under transform. I want it out in the X direction. There's my little shortcut for move. Take my geometry. It should still match the data structure. It's moving it up in the Z direction, but that is not the direction I want it to go in. I want it to go in the X direction. And the X direction, I can move it out. I have a jitter. I have a range. I have a domain. And I have it set to 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly borrow all that. Shift, actually no, because it's off. I'm going to go back in and show you. Series, sequence, range. Pop in your range. Obviously keep in mind 
that this little equation is coming in handy whenever I use range tool to minus one. That's why I didn't type them in in each one. I can change that and it will change every one. Keep it parametric. Go back into my maths. Grab my I'm at 10 minute mark. I better hustle. Let's throw in my domain. And we had a set go from two to 10. I think I had it set at seven. And uh, that's going to basically pull me up into pulling that out on the z-axis, uh, on the x-axis. And in doing so, I can take this preview off. Off. Good. And we just keep moving. Now we've got our move geometry. What did I do to that move geometry? You'll see here, I rotated in a 3D direction again. So I'm going to go to my transforms, Euclidean, rotate 3D, bring it in. Um, it popped in up here. Take my geometry in. I have my angle. What's nice is the angle is exactly the same as the angle I was pulling out of the other one. So I could use that angle again. I can use the exact same centroids if I want to. And my x-axis is, uh, I'm totally fine on the default axis. So I don't need to change that. I'm okay with the x-y-axis if you hover over here. Uh, uh, you have 0, 0, 1. It's rotating around, sorry, on the x, uh, z-axis. Maybe if I said z, I'd remember it. What I'm going to do is a little transformation of a polar array to end. I'm going to grab those. I'm going to do a polar array. It's going to definitely keep on that plane. I want my count very low. So if I just type double click in two, I'm going to get a, a range of two rotating. And I've got my angle as they move around. Uh, the angle itself is defaulting it to two pi. Why not have control over that? And I think up here, I actually did not take any more control. I was happy with what it was, but it would be nice if it was parametric control over top of everything. Grab your two pi angle, and there we go. And now, because I'm setting things differently, I'm going to grab these and just turn my preview off. Still watching the time. We're at 12 minutes nearly. You've got a pretty good rotation that's come like this. And you've got two, but I think the two pi is actually better uh, as a default. So what I'm going to do is just right click and say disconnect. And sorry, I've got shared screen, so I've got a... <laughs> uh, let me just jump in here, angle, and take my disconnect under the pi. I'll be happy with 2 pi. And then you can see when I get a rotation, I start pulling it around like that. And what I did to end this was quite simple. I took a dispatch. And the reason I went into sets list uh, dispatch was I wanted the list, but I also want the list over here to only deal with even numbers. Um, and in doing so, I have always have an even number of lists, which means I can go in and I can grab a geometry param uh, here, uh, cut and paste. And what I'm ending up doing is when I look at view my screen and click on one of these, as I take the other ones off, uh, off, you can see that I get one. So if there's two and if there's four, then if there's six, I'll, I'll, I'll grab, end up grabbing each one as it goes which is just a nice little tool to kind of keep the visualization happening. Now, why doesn't this one look anywhere close to what the other one looked like? It's because I didn't introduce any jitter nodes, and I have a couple minutes to do that, so I'm going to fly with that. Um, I'm going to definitely pump my count up and throw this through the roof. There we go, which makes a pretty simple geometry. But there's no jitter action on any of these. All you have to do is grab a jitter node, jitter, take the data, and funnel it through. Put the data in there and throw those values into there, and throw those values into there. And look at how that geometry starts to transform and not know what to do. Let's grab that again. Let's grab that jitter node over here. Grab our next uh, thing that has a range or a series in it. I thought we had a little series down here. There it is. Let's take our series. Let's put it into the list. Let's pop it into here. Get another range. Let's cut and paste that again. Jitter nodes are just amazing. I think you should play with them. Take your pi values. Uh, we'll, we'll throw it in between the range and the pi, and we'll slide that into there, boom, and we'll take another jitter node, and we're getting very close to the end, and we'll come down here to where there was something else. Here's a little range, playing into this one, jitter, and we just uh, <laughs> neaten that up a little too much for my liking. Uh, why is that so decent? Uh, I think I'm happier with it just going into the X. It seemed to be a little fancier that way. Hmm. And uh, no other jitters required, even though I think I did have four in the initial one. What did I do on that initial one? X. Yeah, I had a jitter in there. Uh, I guess I, I guess I took it out. Um, anyway, a little different form than what was in the past. As we grab this, you can see those patterns. As I click on one of these, and there you go. That's the pattern through it. And we're getting right down to the end, 15 minutes. Put it over onto here. Check out your whole script. 
and I hope you enjoyed it. And let me just go here for standard with 10 seconds left. There you go. All your nodes and what you're looking at. Throw it into a render and bake it.